I don't think I need to introduce myself here. What is important is to get why I'm bringing this when a lot of people made lessons about and it doesn't look important what it is. To understand anything and fell in love with it, you have to hear about its history. Okay, I can say to understand someone when you get my point. People talk about these computer generations in a summarized way, but it's hard to understand or remember. Sometimes, well, you know all the reasons. Let's break this down in a more understandable way. But know that every generation uh, is all about decreasing the size, increasing performance, speed, and customization. The third generation introduced the use of integrated circuits was in between the years 1964 to 1970. Here one chip that has multiple transistors. Transistors are explained well in my previous video about the second generation. The first to develop the idea of integrated circuit was Norbert Noyes of Fairchild Semiconductor and Jack Kilby, an American electrical engineer of Texas Instruments in 1959. The advantages were efficiency and small in size, as in no more one full room for one computer, faster speeds, generated less heat, lesser maintenance, consumed less electricity but still costly, and needed air condition. The most important machine of the third generation was the IBM 360 series costed IBM $5 billion to develop. High-level languages such as Fortran, 2nd to 4th, Basic, COBOL, ETC. It or she was designed to manage high-speed data processing for scientific uses like global weather forecasting, theoretical astronomy, and space physics. At the time, Multiple integrated circuits were needed to construct the central processor. But the idea of placing an entire processor on a single silicon chip was not until the fourth generation. Automatic data processing the newest tax tool of the Internal Revenue Service, and a new dimension in tax administration. But this is the real heart of the Martinsburg Monster, its unofficial name. Nearly everyone in the United States has some concern with this mechanical marvel and its electronic relatives. Some in these same remote quarters in the mountains of West Virginia. Many in seven other widely scattered areas of the country the regional service centers. These machines are things of gleaming, very colored metal and numerous flashing lights. Lights which do not, however, spell out the names of stage and screen attractions and their performers. They spell out, in a sense, the federal tax status of millions of taxpayers, business or individual. While much goes before and much comes after, most of these complex machines are placed in operation by the simple push of a finger. These are the computers, the processing machines, the electronic devices that record the essential facts of all federal tax returns. They accept facts and figures that add up. They reject entries that fail to agree. No matter what the finding, processing is speeded, correction usually hastened. The Internal Revenue Service, parent of this new system of handling federal tax returns, various examiners check the essential preliminaries, legible name and address, social security numbers properly entered, all necessary W-2 withholding forms attached, signatures and dates entered where called for, and so on. The machines, of course, check the math. When information from each return is later transferred to the punch cards, 
all significant tax facts are included. Gross income, tax withheld, refund claimed, and other data. Many returns require more than one card. If the information set forth on the punch card doesn't check out, the machine stops. Notations are made and the card goes back for further study with the return from which it originated and for whatever corrective action is needed. There's a good tape containing data accepted as processed and there's the error tape with information that doesn't check out. An error register later prints out a listing of returns which need attention, giving details of the problems involved. Shortly, the error resolution branch takes over to try to find the causes of the discrepancies. Various tapes with differing functions are produced. They result from some 300 different programs of instruction which tell the computer what to do in processing tax information fed into it. Among the things brought about by tapes in the later stages are notice to taxpayer showing balance due on an account, notice of error or a change of tax, and so on. Computer discovery and refund or credit on costly errors you may have made against yourself in your return, helping assure that all taxpayers are sharing the revenue burden equally. The taxpayer pays no more, no less than what he owes on his return because of computer verification. Thus, IRS can continue to collect the annual billions of federal revenue at a cost of less than one half cent on each tax dollar. To us at IRS, it seems a worthy goal.